The Cube 2 Up is the bigger brother of the Cube 1 Up, the lowest cost 3D printer in the world, according to the manufacturer. The 2 Up will run you an $80 premium over its smaller counterpart, but features an advertised increase in build volume of 2,500 centimeters cubed. Although the barrier of entry for this printer is a fraction of mainstream printers, do the compromises taken outweigh its affordability? Let's find out. The tube is delivered as an unassembled kit, similar to IKEA furniture. Assembly is relatively straightforward, taking about 4-6 to six hours. The more time and care you take in the assembly the first time, the better the printer will perform. The instructions are clear and feature useful pictures to help you along, but it seems like the instructions are not updated as frequently as the parts of the printer are. My printer seems to have come with smaller stepper mowers than the one shown in the instructions, which made assembly a bit more involved. The printer is constructed out of melamine coated MDF, as opposed to other budget 3D printers which are mostly made from acrylic, and fits together with a tab and slot system along with various M3 and M4 bolts. One of the biggest design flaws is that the bolts are threaded directly into the MDF, which they were not designed to do. This makes them incredibly easy to strip, Proper wood screws would make this thing twice as solid. The sides of the printer are held on with just the friction of the tabs and frequently fell off just due to the printer's own weight. I had to put elastic bands around it to keep it together. The 6mm rods that are present in every axis of the printer are secured down with zip ties in both the X and Y axis. Although this is definitely a compromise to a better mounting solution, it doesn't really affect the printer's stability. The extruder of the printer is where I ran into the most problems. The hot end is supposed to slide into the extruder assembly, but mine was way too loose, causing inaccurate prints. I had to remedy this by shimmy with multiple layers of electrical tape, which seems to have fixed the problem. The plate that the hot end slides onto is only fastened on one side, resulting in the tabs wearing out after just a few weeks. This caused the print head to be knocked off axis and then snag on infill. This had to be fixed by wrapping a zip tie around the whole extruder assembly. This printer features your standard 3-axis design, with the X and Z axis controlling the print head and the Y axis moving the print table. The X and Y axis are controlled with belts and bearings and the Z axis is controlled with a threaded rod on the left side. Due to the X gantry only being supported on one side, this printer features major gantry sag. This has to be compensated by greatly tilting the print bed until it is parallel with the X axis which is quite annoying to do as you have to hold the nuts from the bottom of the pair of pliers and use an allen wrench to adjust each corner of the bed. A way to retain the nuts would have made leveling the bed much easier. The bearing assembly on the y-axis, while better than previous versions of this printer, is still not very stable and a lot of the wobble in the printer can be eliminated by printing a replacement. A RAM's board on top of an Arduino Mega plugged into a computer is used to power all four stepper mowers, which is then powered by a 12 volt power supply. The Arduino seems to do a perfectly fine job of controlling this printer, but the instructions for the assembly of the electronics are very vague and seem to be designed for a previous version of this printer. The smaller stepper mowers I was sent with this printer also were not wired correctly, resulting in me having to remove the connectors and wire them properly. I did receive an email from Cubed about this a few weeks after I received my printer explaining how to fix the issue and that they would send a pr properly wired cables to anyone that had the issue for free, which was a good thing to do. Instructions also recommend you mount the, all the electronics to a piece of MDF. This takes up a lot of space and creates a mess of cables. I recommend printing a case for the Arduino mounting on top of the power supply. This cuts down on the printer's footprint drastically. The software that is recommended is Repetier to control the Arduino and Slicer, well, for slicing. Although I've only used Slicer for one print, and instead have been using Cura for most of my prints, the recommended software gets the job done, but you can use almost any software you want with this printer. That's enough about the printer, now let's see how well it actually prints. 3D Benchy I printed off turned out well, I used the 2mm layer height and 20% infill. The top turned out almost perfect, but the overhang on the front of the bow didn't fare so well. This seems to be where the printer struggles, with curved overhangs. This could be helped by printing slower and using a cooling fan on the object. Fired in the lower body, it turned out exactly how it was supposed to and did fine on the overhangs on the cab of the boat. Next, I printed a 3D Hubs Marvin lower quality with 3mm layer height and 30% infill. This didn't turn out that well, it really struggled with the overhang on the eyes and the back, but the lack of detail is to be expected with the lower quality print, and this thing would work fine for a utility print. 
Finally, I printed off a tree frog with 2mm layer height and 30% infill. This turned out the best, with the printer having no problems replicating the curving design of the frog, and did the overhang in the arms perfectly. Once again, it struggled with the overhang under the body. It definitely takes a long time and a lot of work to create perfect prints with this printer, but out of the box, the printer is perfectly capable of doing simple, structural, or utility type prints. But to get it to start replicating small details, you have to put in some effort. As with any kit type printer, the quality of your prints is directly related to how much time you're willing to spend printing upgrades and tinkering with the software and hardware. The 2UP 3D printer definitely shows where its corners were cut, but at the asking price of under $300, it's hard to argue with its value. Especially if you're looking to print utility type things and care less about the aesthetics of your print, although with enough hardware and software tinkering, the 2UP can do some detailed and clean looking prints. But if you don't want to whip out the troubleshooting Google searches every other print, then this won't be the printer for you. So if you're willing to invest some time into adjusting hardware and software, the Cube 2UP is definitely a solid choice as a budget 3D printer.